This is the Volvo V60 in its newest iteration. And here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Let me take you on a tour. The exterior, the interior, the driving experience and a little bit more about this vehicle and also how it compares to the predecessor and also to other vehicles in this segment. Everything of that in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front, this new V60 generation features the Thor's Hammer LED headlamps. They are true LED headlamps and this Thor's Hammer signature here. This one is the daytime running light. In the front grille, it looks also pretty elegant. Momentum has this vertical fins in black. This one here, inscription top luxury trim level, has it in chrome vertical. And then there's also the R design, which has this dot design grille looks a little bit sportier so you can pick it according to your needs. Well, this birch light color is brighter than this luminous sand color of the XC90. I see it now also in the side profile and if you look here at my pants, they are more yellowish and this is more a white bright mix but definitely a very elegant one what do you think 4 meters 76 or 15 foot 6 is the total length of the v60 in this new generation longer than the predecessor version this will have, have an effect on the interior space we have available inscription comes with chrome frames around the windows this is different than in the r design and it's black. Here we have 18 inch rims. Those are optional, but I think it's also a right tire choice. You have enough tire left. Still, it looks already pretty cool. Rather a round design shape overall here. Then keyless entry. You put your hand on the outside here to close it and you put your hand on the inside then to open it again. This one here, the V60, of course, the estate. The S60 is the sedan. We'll show you that on Autogefühl 2. And then suspension-wise, there's a sport suspension available, which puts the car 1.5 centimeters lower. However, there's also the cross-country available, which puts the car 6 centimeters higher. Hmm. We'll soon show you that on Autogefühl. Stay subscribed. Also hit this bell button for the notifications that you always get our newest videos. And we'll also have the cross-country review with a snow experience too. But today, no snow, no road experience. Just hope the weather stays nice. But so far, it is pretty birch light here. Isn't that a proper use of a lighting signature? Here going vertical around, then making a horizontal drift. Pretty nicely done, right? So it doesn't look too different from other Volvo SUVs, for example, or from the other, from, for example, from the bigger estate, the V90. But I think it surely has also its own style. Overall, I think very well done and also keeps this elegant line from the rest of the vehicle. However, in the lower part, you can join the Volvo fake exhaust party right there because this is nothing to do with, you know, with the real exhaust, which is way smaller and inside there. But they just wanted to add some more chrome elements. So look under the hood, Volvo is using all two liter four cylinders for diesel and petrol. Diesel that's D3 with 150 horsepower, a D4 with 190 horsepower, then a T5 petrol with 250 horsepower, then this one the T6, 310 horsepower and always all-wheel drive, 5.8 seconds, the acceleration to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Then there's also the new T6 plug-in hybrid, then with 340 horsepower system power and the T8 with 390 horsepower overall also a plug-in hybrid.
by the way here inside of the doors this is soft touch on the top part also has a structure nicely done the door handle as well optional powers and Wilkins sound system I can recommend then the inside of the doors here in the lower part is quite slim then this one is here is the inscription to trim level only with full animal skin but there are also the so-called city weave seats available which have a nice fabric leatherette trim those are really great I would recommend you to go with those and this one is also all black but they also have bright interiors available this matte wood trim is called driftwood and it fits to the birch outside color it really looks like a birch wood as well you also have it here on the middle console we'll open that for you very soon really nice and feels very natural looks natural it's really cool also here at this side you can also get a little bit darker matte wood or you can also get it in an aluminum decor let's get inside shoe tap <laughs> so sitting inside of course you sit low as you would expect from a normal mid-size segment vehicle but you have enough room around you although it's not the most spacious one in this segment here in the front however me with one way 86 or six foot one the headroom I've left well if I put the seat in the lowest position it's like this so still okay I put it a little bit higher to have the pelvis a little bit more upright that's better for long-term comfort this one however also equipped with a panoramic roof if you leave it out you have some more headroom the steering wheel can be adjusted manual like this in reach and also in height and you find a good position overall so the seat form they offer they are also usually very good i'm even more um, convinced of the seat form we had earlier in the earlier test so check it out as well you will be fine with the mid trim level and you always have a great seating comfort here Volvo is one of the rare manufacturers where you don't need to have the highest grade seating to have a very comfortable one they also offer very comfortable seats already from the lowest levels so here on the interior optional Bowers and Wilkins sound system you can also get a little red cover for the dashboard this is the 9.2 inch screen comes standard also Bluetooth connection comes standard you can connect your phone with Bluetooth right here, but there's also the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connection available. I've already plugged in the smartphone. Vertical fins for the Avans. And then here again, this matte wood styling, also in the lower part. Take a look, another look at it. It's just fantastic. I would take it, I think, exactly in that way. But there's also this other wood tone available. The instruments come standard analog 8 inch or this one here optional 12.3 inch full digital instruments. Well, a lot of the things are really cool. Also, this diamond style here for this um, turning knob for the volume, also the start stop engine knob, really awesome. But then again, you know, the fields here at the steering wheel, hmm, I can still not really live with them that well. It's okay, of course, but measuring the other stuff, also here, this airbag cover this doesn't fit really to the rest of the really cool interior and nice to have a head-up display with the current speed allowed speed or also gps information when you have set destination and let me show you the instruments once more in action when you have the startup pretty interesting to see and then when you for example turn up the rpms but sometimes i think it's lagging a little bit behind is not that fast as for the visualization and the infotainment system up close you have this big home button like with an iPhone um, when you by the way tap and hold it you um, come into this cleansing cleaning mode so you can clean it because it catches a lot of fingerprints here and then you can hit the button again to turn the screen on so to the left you can activate for example the camera system when the car is running it should be there it is that's really cool nice resolution then you can click individual cameras for example check the rear view camera or again switch back to the 360 view go to the front camera and so on what's that is it maybe that's strange oh that's maybe a raindrop and flying in the wind a little bit interesting hmm. so headrest fault right there <laughs> i won't do that for you now because otherwise i will hurt you because you have the position on the rear so my systems, assistant systems, you can activate, deactivate, then you can go to the set nav right here. You cannot scroll in it 
exactly now you have to do it on the right lower side and then you can get in the map so it's actually quite okay then the vertical um, perspective is also nice to navigate it could be a little bit faster and responsive at times and when you go to the right side here again where I picked the CarPlay, then you can also pick the different music sources. And to go for the options, you have to scroll in the upper part and then go to settings. So yeah, you have to learn the system a little bit. The most important thing is temperature. It's available here like this. You can do it like this, but you always have to access it here or also where the vents are, should be coming from. Also the seat heating or the seat cooling, which is also available here next to the Heated steering wheel, all optional, but cool to have for sure. The only thing, well, you don't have a really good turning up or something, but you, you use the voice control. Set temperature to 23 degrees. Temperature set to 23 degrees. There we go. That's, of course, really cool. I'm cold. Temperature set to 24 degrees. So that's working as well. So you can use different voice commands. Pretty good then to do something with changing temperature without, you know, keeping your hands off the steering wheel. And in the music settings, it's worthwhile to experiment between the studio, like the more natural experience, and the concert hall setting, especially recommended for classic music. This is really an echo sound then. This one's more present, and this one more an echo sound, but surely both great. And I felt that sometimes it really depends on the very each individual song which is sounding better. Well, in this middle area, there's a small cubby hole in the front right there. Then there's this big slider with adaptive cup holders, start stop, and then this is the drive mode selector. We'll talk about drive modes when we drive the car, of course. And then there's this armrest here you can fold up and have your smartphone connection there. One to just recharge and one here, as you see, to connect it directly for the smartphone mirroring. And then it's enough space for your smartphone there as well. You can see here we have a shade we can remove actually. And we can also open and uh, you know, close the upper roof depending on what we want to do. Let's open it completely to leave some more light in the interior. And then we can also really open it completely so that I finally get wet in here, although I'm sitting on the inside of the vehicle. And yeah, that's not that pleasant, but what I'm not always doing for you, right? <laughs> in the rear, it's really interesting because so far the V60 or the S60 did not ha have any sufficient legroom here. Well, it's always better when you put your front seat a little bit more upright, then you can put your feet a little bit better underneath it. And you can see even if I would be driving, it still fits with my knees, even have some room left. So that's a big advantage if you compare to the predecessor. However, it's also a longer car. So you also have to live with that. Then headroom wise here in the rear, that's somewhat limited, but still works for me. Also with 190 or 602, it would still work. If you want more headroom, then you would leave out this panoramic roof. And of course, the estate would be falling down a little bit here. So that's also an advantage of the estate here, that you have sufficient legroom also when you lean backwards. Other than that, yeah, it starts to rain now a little bit. You can flip the seats from here, then those head restraints also flip forward automatically. That's one of the systems they have. And you can also unlock them from the front. Auto Gefühl subscribers know that I was hit once very hard by one of those folding head rests in the rear and they have no security system that they don't flip when there's, for example, weight on the seat. That should be something they should reintroduce. I also fix at the outside parts. Then we have this armrest with some cup holders and some more space here as well as a middle climate unit with a 12 volt power supply. Well, you do not have to have it, but also with seat heating if you like, but that again brings up the price pretty much. And you can also see there's a big middle tunnel, so not too easy to sit there on the third seat as an adult. So as for the hatch, let's see. 
electric tailgate opens like this and then well the capacity is really limited if you compare it to um, bigger Volvo estates in the past 530 until 1360 liters that's not the best in class for sure so this one here is also my main criticism argument here because otherwise you know if you have no rails on the side there you can do it like this and this is not automatic so you can do it manually like this up here and then going down again but usually i would expect then you know when you have it like this and it's closed like this and when you open it that it would also go up you know like this and then when you close it again it goes down again but it doesn't do it it's completely manual and one of the biggest flaws here in the rear this one is also very cool you can split the trunk and put a backpack upright in there it doesn't fly all over the vehicle that's pretty cool and also some more room for a placement tire if you like one then on the right side we have some controls to let the seats let the seats flip so and I just do it like this at the moment now also look at the head restraints again that they also flip and i do it at the same time like this and also on the right side here we go and that's of course pretty cool goes all flat and then you have the maximum loading capacity if you go by the way until the seats that would be just a just about a meter in length that's pretty much a standard and then if you go all the way further to the front seat as i would be driving you're at 190 approximately and if you load things through you're over two meters which is possible then and looking at the height you know the height just until the cover this is about 40 centimeters and the total height here is about 76 so sorry 66 centimeters and let's see the width just from the wheel arch to wheel arch is a little bit over a meter but that's always you know that's quite okay as for the square dimensions you see it's most limited in the height that's why you have the low liter figures and let me put a backpack here inside but you can also have you know something of that to see how big it actually is and i put it upright like this for example so overall very well usable and of course an advantage if you compare it to the sedan version welcome let's switch to dynamic and see the first acceleration of this engine downhill in army hmm. that was 40 to 80 with little downhill and that sounded almost like a compressor right i mean it's a turbo in here but it's a four cylinder engine here with the t6 so that sounds really high revving and it is also high revving because you need to push it high revving as it's a small engine 310 horsepower whatsoever so a lot of horsepower out of a small engine and in this dynamic mode here have a increased throttle input the steering is also a little bit stiffer but still the steering feels very artificial so when i do some lane change here i don't have the exact feeling to the connection of the road so overall this dynamic mode does make it sportier yes and then you can use this wheel in the center part go for the comfort mode for example again then the steering is also a little bit lighter again throttle input is being reduced and eco would be even more reduced so you can save some more fuel and i did some tests earlier for the long-term motorway run too and that gave me some 26 to 23 mpg or some 9 liters to 10 liters on 100 kilometers which is not really decent should be a little bit better as for the consumption however as we've been testing the diesel here with this vehicle we had about seven liters on one kilometer so yes slightly better but in general the volvo engines consume too much fuel and there you can also see that this downsizing it is not necessarily a very good thing 
their philosophy to make things, you know, that they don't need like super big engines and stuff. I mean, that's okay, but you see that in reality, you don't save fuel by just making the engine bigger, since you also have a bigger horsepower output than per displacement. So um, the engine also has to work more. However, performance-wise, no, we can't complain. 5.8 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And you've already seen in the first acceleration test that it you know, was hammering quite a bit. What we've also noticed on this first motorway part, we'll now do some city driving and then get to a next motorway part. We already noticed that if we compare this here to the previous generation, the noise insulation is way better. So it's a way more silent ride. This car is equipped with the standard suspension of this vehicle. There's also a sports suspension, minus 1.5 centimeters available. So if you want a stiffer ride, you can also go with that. However, this vehicle overall is rather set on this more comfortable experience. And so I think that the base suspension is also fitting better to the vehicle. It doesn't want to be the sportiest in this mid-size segment. That's rather reserved, maybe for BMW 3 Series or something. This one here wants to deliver you this Swedish or Scandinavian luxury feeling. And I think that's also a good thing that the manufacturers pick their own niche. And indeed it is very comfortable as they have very good seats, as always with Volvo. Then you have also the better noise insulation. And the suspension is also not set it too stiff. Mm, for my feeling it could even out a little bit better when we go over some potholes so it's not the leading suspension in the segment to me but still at the very high level we are comparing also very expensive cars here. It's always funny now when you look at the BMWs like is it a 3 series or a 5 series now? Really hard to differentiate right? <laughs> That should be a 5 Series, right? Hmm. I mean, then there are also different generations here, and sometimes you really don't know. So what about the overview? Well, since it's an estate, it has a straight window at the very rear. Also rather upright windows at the sides. You have a good overview when you look, look around you. It's not the same as in those old Volvos, which were really square alike. That was a little bit easier to look from the inside to the outside and you also had some more room on the inside. So they also went this rather design approach now, but it's still quite okay. The steering, as I said earlier, is very, very light. One, ooh, that was the red light. Not for me. I'm always getting so many comments when I just slightly violate anything traffic alike. Although I'm really driving like among the no, you know, <laughs> most uh, regulation savvy. Also, if you compare to other car reviewers, but still, when I just do some minor violation, I always get like ten comments. So I really try to drive in the performance way when it's possible, but also stay to the traffic rules. <laughs> yeah, that's when when you're on camera. Um, those panoramic light. By the way, the panoramic uh, roof leaves a lot of light in, that's uh, really nice. But um, today, dark, cloudy sky, then it's also nice to have some more light even from the middle part. And also, also very good for camera. Well, if you weren't on camera now recording, you can hear me better when I'm... Um, so I leave the sound system off. But I can tell you, I really enjoyed listening to the sound system here, the Bowers and Wilkins sound system when I drive this vehicle. Especially in those um, 3D surround modes, that's always something to enjoy. So when you're just cruising like this, it's actually quite okay to have a light steering wheel, it doesn't matter that much. Um, but when you're driving sport here, yeah, you would um, actually like something which is you know more connected to the road. Going to the right lane now, that on the left side you can see the blind spot monitor which is appearing now. There we have this red stripe. I think it's also a nice visualization. I mean, I would have said here the turning indicator. It is flashing 
to warn me even further. Very good system. A lot of the assistance systems already inbuilt, for example, the autonomous emergency brake. That's very good. Comes with every Volvo you can buy. Then some options like the blind spot monitor. This one is also a very crucial one. And it has also different systems to keep the speed up. You can actually pick that one. You can have the normal adaptive cruise control, which is here, for example, reducing the speed. I'm not hitting any brake or something. And then there's the so-called pilot assist. So here, by the way, not hitting the throttle, car is accelerating on its own again. The pilot assist, you can switch it over to the right side here with the left thumb is one thing further. So here, then I have this green steering wheel symbol and basically the car is steering now on its own. It's not meant to be a fully autonomous system. Uh, you can use it, for example, when you're in a traffic jam situation, you know, you're just rolling steadily, then you can also say like, yeah, you know, we're doing like this something. But as soon as you drive faster, keep your hands at the steering wheel at all times, pay attention, but it makes you relax a little bit more. So it's keeping the speed and also actively steering. So at the moment now, this is basically stiff keeping me in the lane. And it's overall a good system. They have really good assistance systems overall. Also some emergency warning and stuff. And I'm also enjoying the view through the head-up display. It's a real head-up display that's being projected into the windscreen. And so that gives me, you know, so more, um, so more safety just to look just right through and not down to the instruments. Now let's go back to the sport mode again and show you an acceleration on straight road from 70 to 100 kilometers. That's already it. That was 105 already. So you can see very good performance from, the, from this engine. Although the car does not at all feel like a performance vehicle. Remember, this is also like two liter displacement, 300 horsepower. Oh, that's quite quick for 100 here. Welcome to Germany, guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I know in Russia it's even worse. <laughs> so, um, when you think about a Volkswagen Golf R, you know, that's a two liter engine with 300 horsepower, that's a similar spec we have in here. And you have to remind yourself of that because you wouldn't, wouldn't really believe that, you know? As this car really does not feel performancey at all, except of this really spontaneous acceleration. When you put the shifting lever to the left side, by the way, you can also shift back the gears because we don't have any pedals here. That would be, for example, when you're going down there for a long time in the Alps, for example, that you can set in a lower gear and then roll down or then shift up again. Or maybe if you are planning an overtaking maneuver, well, if you are in the dynamic mode, the car shifts down early and shifts up later anyway, so that should help you. But let's say maybe you are in a comfort mode and say, ah, you know, I want to do some overtaking now. And you can also go to the manual mode, uh, shift back a gear. By the way, it's like pulling towards you, shift back and pull to the front to shift up. Hmm, I always think it should be the other way around, right? Like pushing and like pushing goes down and pulling goes up in the gears. We had the discussion earlier. I think most were on my side. However, there are also some counter sides available. <laughs> Here again, quite calm at 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour on the motorway. The, the vehicle is really calm and collected. Let's, let's take it that way. So we're getting off here. Overall, it's, I mean, it's not the right way you could say this is really, you know, giving me the driving fun, but it's still, it's still a pleasure somehow, you know, not in a very dynamic way, but it's definitely a satisfying one because it calms you down and with a good insulation, and overall gives you a quite confident ride. And that's also one thing I like about the premium mid-size segment cars. Come on, drive a little bit faster, please, now. So I'll wait a little bit because I want to take the roundabout just a little faster for the dynamic action. Now I accelerate in that. Let's see, also here, yeah, the steering angle, I have to steer a little bit more than I would like. It also doesn't serve the sportiest driving fun. You know, again, 
little bit was pushing me to, to the front axle, so it doesn't feel like the best weight balance. And then some points are proving that it's not a real sporty ride. But again, we can test it, how the car is laid out, and it does not have to be a super sporty ride. Again, I think the focus of the car is totally fine. Talking about the focus, by the way, it's one thing um, I was proving just a couple of days ago with the Ford Focus, which is the compact segment, but here again, this is mid-size segment, but the Focus was already that big now in the new generation. There's not much difference in the driving feeling between the Focus here and the Volvo V60, as you feel, you know, which size you are moving around. This again really proves the point that the Focus is basically mid almost mid-size. And you know, Volvo and Ford do share a same, um, same heritage, basically. Volvo belonged to Ford, to the premier automotive group once. But now, nowadays, Volvo are using their own new platforms. However, engine-wise, there are still some derivatives. Also this one, which is still from the Ford era. So I think that will take some more time until they get rid of that, basically. So that's also one of the reasons they use quite old engines and therefore they're also not that optimized for better fuel consumption. Now again, I'll set the cruise control or maybe also the, the pilot assist and just relax again. You can vary this, sorry, vary. I learned that. Thank you so much for one of the comments. I can vary the speed right here with the left thumb. Increase it a little bit or decrease it, pushing lower. Now again, not on the brakes. So the assistance systems they offer, they are actually really good. They are very finely tuned and they offer among the you know, most comprehensive ones on the, on the market and also put the most stuff from stand equipment also among the premium manufacturers. So the safety stuff, Volvo is really very well positioned in that case and it's also one, one of their core brand values. So I think it's also basically a good decision. By the way here, of course, this is not a really a natural feeling how the car steers than automatically. It works basically, but it's not really joyful. Again, I would rather use the pilot assist when I'm in a traffic jam. We had such a situation with the all new XC60 in the review. That was pretty helpful. Other than that, I just use the normal cruise control and take the steering myself. After all, I really want to steer that car when I'm driving it. Why would you not? There are surely some situations where you get bored maybe a little bit. Then it would be cool to have a fully autonomous car already. Of course, on the other situations when it's really about driving, I think most of us car enthusiasts still enjoy to drive it ourselves. So by the way, we have had some accelerations here in this driving part too. And again, in this driving part, we are at just about nine liters on one kilometer. That again proves my consumption point. So the test I did earlier, that is again around the 26, 25 MPG. So overall, new generation, more silent, yeah, it's also a little bit sporty than the previous generation. That has changed, even though it's not sporty overall. Sportier than the previous generation Volvo V60. So it feels overall a little bit more refined. And of course, with this infotainment use, maybe not while driving that much. Also, when you leave it at 22 degrees and AC on, you can live with that, that you don't have the possibility to adjust the temperature. However, that's something we mentioned earlier. A lot of us also prefer if we still have those separate climate knobs, that's good to have while driving. Other than that, it gives you a positive experience. The question is, of course, just with a lot of the Volvo models and also this one here, description model, yeah, it gets really expensive. Or what do you think?
And now to our conclusion for today with the Volvo V60, this estate in this newest generation. Well, I think on the exterior, they've done a nice job. It looks very sleek and elegant. On the interior, they have also a very clean Scandinavian design. Also, the build quality has been massively improved if you compare it to the predecessor generation. Something in the infotainment system is maybe sometimes a little bit too complicated, but we have this in a lot of the vehicles nowadays. Well, as for the driving, it's surely not a very sporty one. It doesn't have to be. The focus is more on the comfortable and calm driving experience. Way more silent than the predecessor generation. Engine-wise, yes, this one here, especially the T6, is very powerful, but the consumption is quite high and overall their engine lineup somehow feels a little bit old-fashioned, although they have a lot of those hybrid drivetrains. Meanwhile, they can give you a little bit more silent driving experience, of course, while they're driving all electric. But then again, it's just when you plug in quite a lot of the times and usually people do not do that with plug-in hybrids. If you do, that's fine and it pays off and that you can also stick with a normal petrol or diesel for the moment. Well, the driving as for the steering could be a little bit more responsive for the road surface. I think that you have a better connection there. That's something they should maybe address with a facelift. Overall, I think it's still a very good presentation here in the mid-size segment. Also, especially with the city VFCs we had in the other car, really like that one. So great styling on the interior is one of my favorite choices here. Driving-wise, not my favorite in the midsize segment. But I think overall you can have a very good position also with this vehicle. If it's not only about the very expensive price. Therefore, I would rather go with an entry engine. It's not a race car anyway. Also pick a mid-trim, for example, on the interior. And then you're still okay price-wise, unlike this one here. The top trim inscription with the T6. Thank you so much for tuning into Autogefuel. We'd like to see your comments right there and also tune in next time.